combating nutrition disinformation and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live and another one of my Jimmy Rants episodes. And if you're brand new to this new segment that I started right at about a week, week and a half ago, where I'm coming on a couple of times a day now, you guys, and I'm doing a rant about some topic in the world of health. And so we do it here live on Instagram. I'm at Livin' Low Carb Man on Instagram. If you don't follow me there, you can also uh, watch the replay for 24 hours on Instagram. And then you can go watch replays of all of these Jimmy Rants episodes over at YouTube. If you go to JimmyRants.com, you go right to uh, the YouTube channel. And we're almost ready to debut the brand new podcast that will have snippets of all of the best of the best of these Jimmy Rants. Okay. So you guys know I like to take on topics that a lot of people just don't touch. Um, is because quite frankly, I don't care what people think. Um, and I have watched things over the years that have raised my, uh, eyebrows a bit. Um, and the thing that I'm about to talk to you today in this Jimmy Rants episode is one of those things that it's just annoying out there in the world of nutritional health. And you guys have seen it. If you've been on Facebook, even here on Instagram, even on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, watch some of the comments that come in uh, from other people, especially when you start talking about diet. Every time you share something about your vantage point um, on nutrition or health, somebody has to chime in with their vantage point and do it in a very snide manner. I'll give you an example. So just this morning, I had posted something yesterday on Facebook and I had posted about, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but it was something about my new book or, or the Real Food uh, Keto or something. And this person said, well, that doesn't work because I think you need to be counting calories and you don't believe in counting calories. And so therefore you're wrong, I'm right, go away. Um, He's a know-it-all, a nutritional know-it-all. And we all see these people every single day. They're out there, they're doing their thing, just being antagonistic towards other people. Just for the sake of being antagonistic, I guess. But they're out there and you have to know they're gonna be out there. And so then the question becomes, all right, they're out there, they're doing their thing, no matter what you say, up is down, uh, blue is red, it's basically going to be whatever you think is just the opposite uh, is their point of view. And so how do you deal with these people? So let me tell you how I dealt with this guy who said I believed in uh, the, the, the calories didn't count. I said, thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. And I'm really happy that you found what works for you in your health journey. And I wish you well in your continued health journey. And see, I didn't have to get into it real aggressive. I didn't have to be ugly towards him. Um, I did correct him by saying, you know, please be careful about believing the internet memes about me um, and what people say that I say, because I've never once said that calories don't matter. What I have said is that when you eat a low carb, well formulated, uh, low carb, moderate protein, high fat ketogenic diet, and you have uh, periods of intermittent fasting that happen as a spontaneous result of eating that way, that you'll end up eating, if you're eating to satiety, the amount of calories that's right for you. Now see that in that statement, it has nothing to do with calories don't matter um, or don't count. They, they do in the context of what I just described. So when I said that, he's like, well, we all know because you still have weight on your body that you're eating to a calorie excess and you need to put yourself in a metabolic ward for 30 days and, and get that weight down and it's all a calorie thing. So again, I was kind. I went back and I said, thank you again for 
uh, an engaging discussion. I really appreciate you bringing this to my attention. Um, again, I, I have never said that calories don't count, uh, and I have found incredible health markers as a result of eating this way. Of course, this guy wouldn't let it go. He went about six times, and at one point I said, you know, best wishes to you for a healthy life, um, and, and I went about my business. Um, and if it was on one of my pages, I would have given him just so much rope before I blocked and deleted him. But we have those know-it-alls. They think they got the answer to all your woes. And of course, um, when you're a public figure out there and people uh, like to try to attack you uh, because of that, um, I get that a lot where people say, well, you don't deserve to have a platform. I do, so I'm going to rail against you to raise myself because I was the one that was antagonistic towards Jimmy Moore. And I'm like, okay, great. Do you feel better? Um, but they do. They do all that stuff. So the nutritional know-it-alls kill them with kindness. I, I have always had that philosophy of at the end of the day, they're a human being. They don't know how to uh, interact with another human being, obviously, with some of the vitriol that comes out of some of these comments from the know-it-alls, but they are a human being, so treat them with respect, even if they're not treating you with respect. And that can be hard, especially when you don't have any uh, credentials after your name, like we talked about on a previous Jimmy Rants. You know, a lot of people, they feel inadequate about saying anything, and along comes a PhD, or along comes a, a, an RD, or along comes someone with some kind of letters after their name that says, well, you're all wrong. Um, and they do it in kind of an ugly way. That doesn't mean nutritional know-it-alls don't have knowledge. A lot of them do. A lot of them, though, don't know how to handle uh, the interaction part of it, which is where the angst comes up and where there's conflict where there doesn't need to be. So... That's kind of the crux of what I wanted to say of how you deal with these nutritional know-it-alls. You be really kind to them. And then you state your position clearly. We have lost the fine art of debate just because you disagree with someone's position on any issue. Name your issue, whether it's in nutrition or in politics or in really any facet of life. If you disagree with someone else, that does not mean you can't be buddies. That does not mean you have to be mean and ugly and disagreeable. And so these nutritional know-it-alls, a lot of them use an aggressive tone to get their point across. And to me, that's the wrong tactic. If you're trying to persuade someone to your side of an issue, I think what you want to do is present the information and give it to them in a straight manner. Um, and, and so it's easy to understand and even come to some center ground. So, oh, I, I understand that you don't believe it's about the calories. Going back to that Facebook guy again. I understand you don't believe nutritional health uh, is a result of calories. Um, but here's where I'm coming from. Blah, 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 blah. You know, and, and go and explain. So um, hopefully we can come to some kind of an understanding. Then that allows me to come back and say, well... I understand where you're coming from, and I, I hear you saying that you think calories count, and here's why, but here's the counter argument, so how about the hormonal connection, yada, yada. We have lost that art of having this kind of discussion anymore, because the moment there is disagreement on any topic is the moment things get ugly. And of course, you see it all the time on Facebook, especially, is notorious for it. Um, but it's everywhere on social media, and it's actually spilled over into real life a lot of times as well. So how do you deal with the nutritional know-it-alls? You try to be kind. You try to guide a, an adult discussion. Um, again, we're adults here. This is how people used to interact with each other. They didn't used to have this butting heads kind of mentality. They used to have gentlemanly debates. There was a political show back in the 90s called Crossfire. Um, and it was a well done show because they get people on two sides of an issue and they would go at it. And at the end of it, they'd shake hands and walk away. And it was a beautiful thing. And unfortunately that kind of mentality is gone. And again, this isn't just about 
uh, nutrition. It's not just about politics. It's everything in in the world right now. So deal with them the best you can. Sometimes people are going to be belligerent to a fault, and they like the the controversy that gets stirred up when they do that. And so you've got to recognize some people you're just going to have to block, delete, and move on. Um, other people, maybe they don't start off the conversation very well and their their nutritional know-it-all-ism comes out in full force with a little bit of ugliness stirred in. Don't automatically assume they're a hater or whatever. Just try to engage them a little bit. And I've found sometimes when I do that, they'll go, oh, I had no idea you you didn't think calories weren't a big deal. I'm glad to hear that you, you understand that they count, but that you don't have to count them when you're keto, yada, yada. And so that's the kind of conversations that I like to have with people so that then we have a mutual respect for each other and each other's positions. Even if we don't change our position, you can at least understand where someone's coming from. All right, let's see what you guys have to say about this topic of how to deal with a nutritional know it all. Mr. Joe Keto says no diet or changing your lifestyle is uh, ever exactly the same for everyone. And that's the key point, uh, Joe. Thank you for making this point. Um, people are very religious about their dietary beliefs. And of course, people have pegged me that way. Well, you want everybody to eat keto. No, I don't. I've never once said that my desire is to have every single person on the planet eat keto. If you need to eat keto, then obviously I'm going to provide encouragement and resources in that area. But if you need to eat another way to find health, I'm going to support you in that as well. So you're exactly right. We are what's called bio-individual. So if we're all bio-individual and we all have various needs, Keto may not be right for one person, but it may be very right for another person, which is why the Dietary Guidelines for Americans has been the, the biggest failure, nutritional health failure in the history of the world because they tried to make a one-size-fits-all uh, guidelines for eating, and it didn't work because we're not all the same. Butter Me That says, so true, everyone is sectioning off into their tribes, Nutritionally, politically, I miss good discussion. And it's sad too, uh, butter me not, uh, butter me that, excuse me, butter me not. I was going to say, yep, completely butter it, right? Butter me that, thank you for that. And so, um, yeah, I, it, it is so weird because that switch happened so fast where we used to have these really intelligent discussions and people would agree to disagree without being disagreeable. And unfortunately, that's gone. So when you deal with a nutritional know-it-all who's just going to be belligerent with his antagonism, his or her antagonism, at some point, if the discussion's not going anywhere, you have to walk away from that discussion and be okay with that. People will send me things all the time where someone is saying something really ugly about me um, in a discussion, and I'm just like, thank you, but I'm not interested in having any kind of discussion with someone who would have to immediately stoop to some insult or some other tactic to get their point across. If they have a viewpoint, I want to hear it. And people know me well on my podcast. I have people with different viewpoints than mine on all the time. I've had many vegans on over the years. I've had people that, that absolutely loathe me on the show because I think there can be discussions had there. Um, that could come out of that. Hello, Carly. How are you? Thanks for being here. Hello, George. Listening and learning, George says. Yes. Um, it's a tough one, guys. I'm not going to lie. Uh, dealing with nutritional know-it-alls, especially when you're just a lay person and no nutritional credence behind your, your name with uh, any kind of letters. And especially people are intimidated by doctors. Well, a doctor said it. Nobody can counter that. I like challenging PhDs uh, and MDs and other medical health professionals. I think that's how we learn and that maybe they'll learn something from a patient perspective that they're so caught up in the system that they've neglected maybe to get another vantage point. I think some productive conversations can be had. It depends on the decency of the person. Carly, you're exactly right. And 
Sadly, my dear, those are few and far between these days. Um, we've kind of looked decency in the rearview mirror in a lot of cases. Not all cases. There's still intelligent conversations to be made. And I would love it if we somehow had um, some kind of a social media platform where people could come on. And the rule is you have meaningful discussions. You're not allowed to be antagonistic. You're not allowed to uh, you know, call other people names. You're not allowed to use any of the tactics that you see everywhere else online. You're only allowed to state your position and why you oppose the other position, not the person. I think sometimes what happens with these nutritional know-it-alls is, well, they'll see somebody like me. Well, Jimmy Moore, you're all about keto and you're not, uh, you're not healthy because you're not down in weight all the way where you need to be. You're not that perfect body. And so they make it about the personality rather than about the topic at hand. And my response to keto being different from someone else's response to keto doesn't mean keto is bad. Carly, you've had an amazing success story with keto and you are a prime example of someone that's done extremely well and you can see it on the outside and you've lost a lot of weight and I'm very proud of you. But other people would look at someone like myself and go, oh my gosh, he, he eats keto and he still looks like that. And so it becomes about the personality and not about the topic at hand. Butter me, that uh, good conversation is one of the joys of being human. Hang on for dear life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I like having great discussions. Um, but unfortunately, what happens is very quickly in, in debate, uh, people take offense. And so when people take offense because you're merely um, disagreeing with their position on some topic, uh, let, let's take the uh, uh, higher protein keto versus higher fat keto, okay? So that's kind of the one raging in the keto community right now. And so higher protein people are so protective that it's about making sure you get uh, plenty of, of protein and fat is a lever. They like to use that kind of commentary. And that's fine. I mean, if you want to state your position like that, that's great. But then what happens is you come on and you start talking about a well-formulated, low-carb, moderate-protein, high-fat, ketogenic diet. They're like, well, the fat will turn to fat and you don't need to do that. And, oh, this and, this. and, and, and then it quickly goes to, well, look at what happened to Jimmy Moore and look at this person, look at that. And it becomes this, this ugly fest very quickly. Um, so yeah, pet peeve, guys. I see these know-it-alls all the time. Uh, I still get criticized for being unethical because I consume animal products. Yeah, you, you've got the vegans come after you. Carly, you've arrived, my dear. When the vegans come after you because you eat keto and you eat animals, um, you have made it because you're on their radar screen. But uh, relish in it. They are the worst, by the way, the vegans uh, with the know-it-allism. They, they totally think uh, people who eat meat are... Uh, terrorists, I suppose. Um, and, and it's sad that they would take on that position. To me, we have more in common with vegans than, uh, and they have more in common with us than the sad diet eaters. We're all trying to get people to eat real food. We're all trying to people uh, get people to eat in such a way as to improve their health markers. We have so much in common, and yet there's this butting heads because their know-it-all-ism uh, requires their brains to say, okay, uh, if you eat meat, that's like what we would say about sugar. I mean, it's, it's a never ending battle with vegans. I've just said, you know what? You found what works for you. Congratulations. I wish you well in your continued health journey. And I would hope that you would wish me well in my continued carnivore diet or my continued, uh, low carb, high fat, uh, mostly animal-based product uh, uh, food diet. That doesn't happen. You guys know that doesn't happen. All the while, my vegan and vegetarian coworkers struggle at work. I can tell they don't feel optimal, so I don't feel the need to say anything. They don't feel optimal. And, and here's the thing, uh, Carly. I just heard a news story this morning on the radio that half of vegans, they did a survey, 
and they admitted half of vegans cheat by having meat. So there is this primal urge and call in them, even though they have the nutritional know-it-all-ism going on about their uh, uh, plant-based diet, they know deep down inside their body is craving and wanting those animal-based foods. So it is really fascinating to watch it all unfold. All right, guys, that is it for this Jimmy Rants episode on how to deal with a nutritional know-it-all. Kill him with kindness, be loving, be non-personal and non-attack mode. Even if they come after you, you remain calm, you remain um, collected, you remain factual. I think all of those things can help when you interact with people uh, that tend to be that way. And at the end of the day, other people observing the conversation will say, you were the reasonable one, they were the wackadoodle one, and your position's probably going to look better to the innocent bystanders that would happen to uh, to watch that on Facebook or Instagram or wherever, there, or even here on uh, YouTube if you're watching on the YouTube channel. So go to JimmyRants.com and you can watch the video replays of all of these rants. If you're on Instagram, or if you're not on Instagram, you guys here live are on Instagram, but those of you watching on the replay, go follow me on Instagram at Live and Low Carb Man. I do these twice a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, Eastern time. And, and then you get to watch the video for 24 hours on replay and you can see all the comments somebody said on YouTube the other day. I can't see the comments, Who, who's talking to you? Because it's just the video. Well, come on Instagram Live and you'll see comments right down there. There's lots of them. Um, and so you can interact with me live. And then coming soon, we'll have a Jimmy Rants podcast that'll have the best snippets from all of these Jimmy Rants. Uh, we're going to try to do those on a pretty regular basis to try to get this word out more about all these topics we're talking about. But thanks for being here, you guys. We'll be back a little bit later on with another Jimmy Rants. Bye.